Today, let's take a look at events in the European Parliament, where yesterday Nigel Farage and his band of jolly 24 Eurosceptic MPs took their seats. It was like the start of a new school term. Everyone was on their best behaviour, Eva eager to make new friends. Not. Have a look. And what have we seen in the last 48 hours? We've seen naked militarism with the EU flag being virtually goose-stepped round the yard. We've seen the European anthem. And actually, I'll tell you this, we now, the Eurosceptics, are the progressives. These two gentlemen had nothing to say today. It was the usual dirge-like dull looking back to a model invented 50 years ago. And we're the ones that want democracy. We're the ones that want nation-state. We're the ones that want a global future for our countries, not to be trapped inside this museum. Thank you. Mr. Farage, what are you doing here? What I heard is the speech of the leader of the opposition in the House of Commons. If you want to hold that kind of speech, get elected there. What are you doing here? The reason, the reason why you are speaking here is that you have enlisted continental Europeans in your group just to be able to boast as a British citizen who wants to get out of the European Union. If you want to be considered as the leader of a European political group, then make speeches of a European political leader. Thank you. Well, Mr Lamberts, I have to say, you sound like somebody from the old communist era saying that if anybody else... If anybody else has a different point of view, clearly they're mentally ill or there is something wrong with them. What you're going to have to get used to, all of you, is the idea that across the political spectrum there are now more Eurosceptics in this Parliament than there have ever been, and many of them do not subscribe to ever closer union. They don't subscribe to that flag. They don't want a European anthem. They want a modern Europe where we can trade together, cooperate together, and have mutual respect for each other. And I'll tell you this, Mr Lamberts, don't worry too much about my presence, because within the next five years, I won't be here. All right. Well, a bold prediction. Good to see they're all getting along so well in the European <laughs> Parliament. And with us from Strasbourg is the UKIP MEP, Nathan Gill. Welcome to the programme. So all very heated in that exchange we just saw there between Nigel Farage, your leader, and Mr Lamberts. Is this a taste of what's to come? Oh, I think without a doubt. I mean, for the first time, a third of the MEPs here in the Parliament are actually Eurosceptic or against an ever deeper union. And already in, in the debates that happened yesterday, we were all there, we were all participating, we were throwing flies into the ointment, and they did not like it one bit. Right, but does that mean also that debate is going to be so polarised because you have got more parties on the extremes, whether it's left or right, or whether it's in or out, that actually there's going to be no consensus, you're not going to agree to anything, it'll be stalemate? Well, I think you've hit on a very good point there, but what we're seeing already is that the three um, Federalist parties are already starting to gang together to, to form almost one big super party. And, um, and because they've got two-thirds of, of the, the MEPs, they're basically starting to, to get their own way with practically everything. Um, I mean, there's already been stitch-ups with regards to the vice presidencies. Uh, we, we made an agreement with the, the Conservatives that we would vote for their candidate, they would vote for ours, but the Conservatives, of course, stabbed us in the back <laughs> and they went, in, went ahead and, as was to be expected, I'm sure, but they went ahead and they joined with the Federalists. And, and so what we're seeing is the, a third of the people of Europe who voted for anti-EU, anti-Federalist parties are now really going to be sidelined by the other parties merging together, trying to get their agenda through. Right, so backroom deals, backstabbing, it all sounds like politics as usual. But there will be people who will pose, that, que <laughs> pose that question to you that Mr Lambert's posed to Nigel Farage. What are you doing there? You're taking the Brussels Eurocent, you're sitting in the Parliament and you want out. What are you doing there? Well, I mean, as, as, as you saw, and, and you know, quite aptly, your cameraman has placed me with my back to the EU flag here. <laughs> and during the, the opening of the Parliament, we all turn our backs on the EU national anthem. And it's because the people who voted for us want us to come here and want us to, to represent them 
in their anti-EU, anti-federalist voice. We do not want to be a part of this. We have to come here, though, to remind the MEPs, remind the Commission that there is a huge chunk of the British electorate who do not want this. That's our job. That's what we're here for, and that's what we're going to do. Now, Nigel Farage made that bold prediction that he wouldn't be there in five years' time. Do you think he's confident of achieving it? Oh, absolutely. And, um, and quite frankly, I don't think any of us will be here in five years' time because Britain will be out of the EU. And, the, and the, the point that we're trying to make with the people at home very clearly is if you really do want a free and fair referendum, the only way is to vote UKIP. Get UKIP MEPs, MPs elected next year so that we can be the balance of power and we can make sure that whoever oh. is in government, whether it's Labour or Conservatives, give us that referendum. Have you made any friends or is everybody avoiding you? We've made lots of friends within our group, <laughs> yes. but I think the rest of them seem to be avoiding us. All right, Nathan Gill, we'll just leave it there. Anthony Selden, what's your reaction, seeing that rather heated exchange at the beginning, listening to this new MEP for UKIP? It, it has changed. I said politics as usual, but actually it's changed, hasn't it, the feel of it? Well, I think Europe's changed, hasn't it? And Europe is being driven towards an ever closer union. And uh, people in Britain and across Europe are rebelling at that.